Hello everyone, welcome back to Pascal's Kitchen. Today we're going to make pesto. I love pesto in all forms, not just the classic basil version, but other versions using other herbs. And we're going to make two different pestos today and I'm going to show you different dishes that you can use them with and not just pasta. In fact, no pasta at all in today's version. You can, of course, put these pestos on pasta if you choose. The first pesto we're going to make is a parsley mint pistachio pesto and it is from my Lily Dune, my vegetable cookbook, the new book. And in this case, it was made to go with a grilled baby gem salad with snap peas. Today, I'm going to use the pesto to make a simple vinaigrette. What do we need to make the pesto? Everything gets put in a food processor, very quick and easy. This is one cup of chopped parsley and half a cup of mint leaves two tablespoons of chopped chives and quarter cup of pistachios. The recipe, by the way, with all the measurements is in the link below. So we pop this in here and oh, this is the zest and juice. Actually, there's two lemons in here because I need some for the other recipe. But we're going to put the zest and juice of one lemon in here pop this on here and then with the motor running add a drizzle of olive oil until it gets to the right consistency you get a nice chunky pesto you may have to check once or twice as you're doing this and run a spoon or a knife around the edge just to make sure everything is well blended. This is still a little dry at this point, so I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil to the mixture. There, we have this lovely chunky pesto. It's quite thick, but we're going to thin it as we make the, the vinaigrette for the salad. I'm just going to push these things out of the way and we'll make our salad. Okay, so for this green salad, you just need about a good tablespoon, a heap tablespoon of the pesto mixture. Okay, a very big heap tablespoon of the pesto mixture. And to that, I'm going to add some olive oil, about another tablespoon and a half of olive oil, a little pepper, and a little bit more lemon juice. If you don't want to use more lemon juice, you can use some vinegar as the acid for the vinaigrette and mix it together and it creates this absolutely luscious vinaigrette that will coat your lettuce leaves. I put the utensils on top of the vinaigrette and then put my salad greens right on top of the utensils. When you're ready to serve the salad, just remove the utensils, the greens will fall into the vinaigrette, and then you can toss and serve. It's ready to go. There. So I'll do that right now. And then at the end, um, I just add some purple basil to this. I love the color and I love the little extra bite of flavor that it gives the salad. So delicious and so easy. This pesto is actually wonderful on roasted vegetables and sometimes, and it's one of the recipes in the book, I put it with little fingling ro uh, potatoes that have been roasted, cut the fingling in half and then stuff, the pest stuff it with the pesto. Really delicious, fantastic with roast chicken. So there we go. This one is the pistachio pesto with the green salad, and now we're going to make the next. The second pesto we're going to make is a slightly different version of the classic pesto. So it has three different types of basil in it. It has lemon basil, Thai basil, and 
regular basil. If you can only get regular basil, it's absolutely fine. Make it with that. Instead of garlic, I put a shallot in it. I think it's milder, it's not quite so potent, particularly if you're using it with salad greens or if you're going to use the pesto, as in this case, with just tomatoes for a salad. If you want something a little bit more robust, absolutely put some garlic in it if you wish to do that. So I have three large handfuls of, of basil leaves in here and one shallot, and I'm going to pop these into the food processor and along with the pine nuts and the juice and zest of a lemon. And then I'm going to start the motor running. Oh, I'll put some pepper in here as well. About seven or eight grinds of pepper and a little pinch of salt. Then I'll start the motor running and drizzle olive oil as I did with the other one. We want this one to be a little bit looser than the previous, the previous pesto. Again, with this pesto, you need to just scrape down the sides once or twice. Make sure that everything is mixing well together until you have really lovely consistency for your pesto. There, perfect. Now, you can, of course, add this to the pasta. Um, or you can mix it with the tomatoes and add the tomatoes into the pasta. This makes great crust crustini. And if you wanted to add some feta to this or maybe some goat cheese, you could do that too. I'm just going to take a spoonful of this and mix it in with these tomatoes. Really scrumptious. There. Maybe pop a few extra basil leaves on the top as a little decoration. There. Different versions of the pesto for you. I'll see you next time. Until then, bon appétit and don't forget to subscribe.